welcome. Today we're going to be looking at revenue recognition for interest income, but specifically using the effective interest rate method as prescribed by IAS 18. Okay, let's do this with the use of an example. So you sell land for a value of 100,000. I've used CU to denote currency units. It may be dollars, rands, euros, whatever your functional currency is. Assume that the selling price equals the carrying amount of this land and that this land, this loan that you've given your uh, the purchaser will result in a payment of 130,000 in three years that you will receive. Okay, so obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the difference between the 130,000 and the 100,000, well, that must give you 30,000 Rand. What is that? That will be interest. The question is, how do I recognize that 30,000? For those of you who don't know any better, you would try and straight line that. Go 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. That is incorrect in terms of IAS 18. IAS 18 says you must use the effective interest rate method. Okay, so where would we start? The first thing to calculate here is the time value of money components. Let's just think about this. In terms of our time value of money, let's put this on a timeline. Our present value equals 100,000. That's at time zero, today. In three years time, you will be receiving the future value, which is 130,000. Okay. The one, two, three periods had interim payments of zero, zero, and then only the final future value. What's missing here? You've got the future value, you've got the present value. Okay, so let's go and put those into our calculator. The future value is 130,000. The present value is 100,000. Okay, I need you to work out what is missing now. You have payments, periods, i.e. N, and interest rate. Okay, take a second, push pause, work out what element is missing, and calculate it, please. Okay, so now coming back, I'm assumed you've got your financial calculators out. You've put in the future value of 130, the present value of 100. Remember, the future value and present value need to be different signs. So I'm going to make that present value a negative number. I put it in brackets. In the number of periods here was three. Payments were zero. So therefore, what's left? You have to compute the interest rate. And that interest rate, if I compute it, I will round it for the purpose of writing it down to five decimals. So it's 9,139,29%. Please save that figure in your calculator. Don't round it on your calculator. Just save it as is. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please, that is what I will be referring to as my effective interest rate. That is going to be set in stone for the remainder of the three years. Okay, so we've done our time value of money calc. We have worked out our effective interest rate. The accounting requires more than just the mass. We must now do the journals. So let's do together the journals for year one. Year one, the very first journal on transaction date, I'm going to go debit loan receivable, right? That is a financial position account. And that is going to be 100,000 that I'm owed. owed. What am I giving up? Well, I'm giving up an asset, right? I'm giving up land, also a financial position, a balance sheet account. I told you that the selling price was equal to the carrying amount, so there's no profit or loss on D recognition. Okay, then at reporting date one, at year end one, I need to work out what is the interest, okay, and I'm going to have to increase the loan receivable. So I will debit loan receivable. And I will credit interest income. Please take note, interest income is a profit or loss account, whereas the loan receivable is a financial 
position, the balance sheet account. I want you to please give me the calculation and the figure that will be used there, either using the amortization function on your calculator or the manual calculation with using written out sums. Please push pause, give it a try. Great, so here's the calculation. If I'm smart, which by this stage in your studies or your professional life, you should be able to use your financial calculator, I will just pull up the amortization function and go amortization period one to one, the interest component, which will give me 9139. Now, what is the calculator doing? In the background, I could do a manual calculation, which is taking my opening balance of 100,000, multiplied by the effective interest rate, and here I'm going to use the 9,139,29%, and again, that gives me 9139. So, I'm going to record the interest income, 9139, and increase the loan receivable, 91. Three, nine. Just to help you along, I'm going to keep a little balance of the loan receivable down the right hand side and I'll have positives as debit, negatives or decreases as credits. Okay, so I first bring the loan into existence in the first journal. I increase it by debiting 100,000. I then unwind the interest for year one and make the loan receivable bigger by 91 Three nine. I debited the loan. So my closing balance for year one is 109139. Closing balance for year one. Okay, next up, we now need to do year two. Please take a second and try to give me that journal for unwinding interest for year two with the correct amount. Push pause and give it a try. Great. So now we come back. The journal is exactly the same principle. I'm going to make the loan receivable bigger, therefore debit it. And I'm going to credit interest income. Okay, and the interest income, once again, is going to profit or loss. Loan receivable going to my statement of financial position. What's my calculation? Well, again, if I'm smart, I used my financial calculator and I went amort. 2 to 2 interest, and that gave me 9974. Okay, if I wanted to do a manual calculation, well, I would have taken reporting date 1's closing balance as my opening balance 109139. And again, times it by the, or multiplied it by the exact same effective interest rate, which is 9,139,29%, which again gives me 9,974. Okay, so I've recorded year two's interest on the effective interest rate. Take notice different to year one, okay, because the interest is based on the effective interest rate. It's based on this new opening balance. So I'm going to add the 9947 to my opening balance to give my closing balance of 119113. And that is year two, closing balance being a debit. Last up, year three. Please unwind the interest first. And again, do the maths for me quickly now along with the journal. Push pause and do the calculation. Great, assuming you've done the calculation now, I'm going to go and debit my loan receivable. Again, financial position, please. Be very pedantic about mapping your accounts properly. Credit, interest income, which goes to profit or loss. Okay. My calculation here, ladies and gentlemen, was amort 3 to 3 interest, or I could have taken my opening balance of 119113 and multiplied that by my effective interest rate of 9,139,29%. 
Either way, I'm going to get the same answer, and that is interest of 10, 8, 8, 7. Okay, so I had an opening balance for year 3 of 119113, being a debit. Okay, to that I've added another debit of 10, 8, 8, 7. Guess what? That is going to give me my future value, my closing balance of 130,000. What's the final step? Well, the final step is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to receive the money. Okay, so I'm going to go debit bank, financial position, and credit, loan receivable. It's no longer an asset, the loan receivable, because I've received the cash. There's no more future benefit. So I will reverse it out by crediting it. That is, again, the full 130000 now. So I have unwound the 130000 the interest up to 130000 My closing balance now is down to null. Please make sure you can work your financial calculators. Do not rely purely on your manual calculations. Excel also has some great functions, as do most spreadsheet programs. Thank you.